up guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com in Brooklyn, New York, and today I'm taking a look at the SB1, which is the service boot offering from the new and unusually transparent company, Oliver Cabell. So Oliver Cabell launched in 2018 with the goal of being a more transparent company than most of the other big companies out there who normally don't tell you what their markups are, right? But Oliver Cabell's whole shtick is that on all of their products, they tell you how much everything costs, like in painstaking detail. They'll tell you the leather, the uh, import duties, packaging, all this sort of stuff. The SB1 is their most popular boot. It is their service boot, as I mentioned, the SB1. Interestingly, they were so invested in being part of their shoemaking process that they actually bought part of a factory in Spain where their shoes are made so they could have more control over the production process and help to reduce the cost of material and labor. This is meant to take the idea of no middlemen, which is very popular nowadays and the whole digital enterprise kind of thing that's going on in our shoes these days. Uh, that's meant to help them take that idea to the next level. So I guess transparency and value are like the real sorts of uh, ideals that Oliver Cabell sort of tries to embody, which is something I talked about a lot in my review of their pretty well-priced white sneaker, which I also reviewed, you can check out right there. So let's talk about the aesthetics for a second. The SB1 is your classic service boot type of look, a nice classic lace up. I got mine in black because I don't have many black boots that look like this. I'm sorry if it's a bit boring to look at, but normally I find black boots a little bit too military-like or it's easy for them to come off as a bit military-like. I don't have many like this that are actually quite subtle, not too blocky, relatively tapered at the toe. It's not really bulbous like a Doc Martens, for example. And also, this is mostly vegetable tanned leather, which if you like leather, you know it results in a more muted matte sort of look than the really shiny, chromey, chromey kind of leather that you often get on boots, especially cheaper boots like the Doc Martens as well. You've also got vintage brass eyelets here, Italian waxed laces running through them. You've got a gusseted tongue, which helps with water resistance, and it also helps to make sure the tongue doesn't like kind of slide over back and forth on your foot, which a lot of boots tend to do. And also you've got this nice uh, anti-slip rubber sole here made in England, which helps to give it some grip, despite having a nice flat appearance. So this is made on the, uh, the 812 last, is what it's called. Which basically just means, I mean, you know, that's something that Oliver Cabell made themselves. It's like the way, the, the shape around which they make their boots. So it's just like pretty low profile, not too blocky. So it's like not really very informal and it's not very formal either. It's like right in the middle, which I think is a pro for black boots and for like a lot of boots as well. So there's a lot of ways to style this sort of boot because it is quite versatile. It doesn't really very neatly fall into the camp of dressy or casual. For me, I usually just wear these with like uh, blue jeans and a gray Henley, but that's just because I'm an extraordinarily boring dresser. You can probably think of some better ideas than me. So let's talk about the leather. This is full grain combination tan pull up leather, about one and a half millimeters thick. Full grain just means it's made from the top layer of the animal's hide. Uh, that's what you want for boots. That's what will look cool, like cool boots as they age. Um, pull up means it's got so much oil and wax in it that the color changes when you kind of pull on the leather, though it's hard to see that with the black leather. Uh, finally, uh, sometimes this is called vegetable tanned leather, but it's chrome tanned a little bit. So in short, vegetable tanning is the way leather's been made for centuries. It's tanned with like tree bark and such. Typically it makes for stiff but durable leather, but the leather is softened with a quick chrome tanning process uh, at the end of its you know, production process. The goal is to get the best of both worlds here. And a lot of companies do combination tanning like Chrome XL, which is basically the most popular leather in American boots. The leather is sourced from a tannery in Albacete, Albacete, I don't know, Albacete, Spain, which is where the shoes are made, mind you. Uh, everything is Spanish here, even the nails in the heel. And it's got no shortage of scuffs here, but I've been wearing these for a few weeks and that's always a midway point between new boots and leather looking cool. The three week mark is always a bit ugly. And the scuffs are also because it's a natural leather. It's not very highly treated with protecting sprays or anything like that. It's an all natural leather, which a lot of guys do prefer. And speaking of scuffs, Oliver Cabell sells a leather conditioner that's just called leather conditioner. But what's cool is that it's made with the same oils and waxes that the boot is tanned with. So that's like a coconut oil, almond oil, beeswax, a bit of olive oil as well. So it helps you like uh, soften and also to clean and condition the leather. So uh, that's what you wanna use. I don't know, every few months, depending on how often you're wearing these, depending on how dry the leather looks. What you do wanna do uh, is make sure that you clean it before you do that, because otherwise that's gonna get like some dirt and stuff like kind of embedded into the leather and that can reduce the longevity of the leather. So just give it a clean, uh, brush it down now and then, uh, a damp rag here and there. And also you can use like a leather spot cleaner when you get like some really tough stains on there. 
So the outsole here, this is a uh, rubber from England and the layers go rubber outsole and then a foot forming leather midsole, uh, which is also vegetable tan by the way. Vegetable tan midsoles are sometimes preferred because they may mold to your foot better than chrome tanned leather. There's a steel shank in here, which helps with arch support and stability and helps the shoe to uh, kind of retain its shape as it ages. And there's an EVA insole. And there's also vegetable tanned leather uh, for the footbed and the lining as well. It's a fully lined boot, which is very nice. EVA is pretty uh, common, well, increasingly common in boots these days. Thursday Boots offers it, a few other companies do as well, Wolf and Shepherd. Uh, it's a foam that traditionally was used in sneakers, but it's getting a second life in the 21st century in boots because it helps to absorb shock. A couple things to draw your attention to, the stitching that runs through the outsole. For starters, it's, it's misaligned in, in one boot. See how it comes out from the channel? So it's a little bit sloppy. Um, and also there are two different types of threads here. See how they're more blonde at the front of the foot and more brown in the midfoot? They do that because each thread has different tensile strength, which I think is a, that's a pretty cool touch. So that's the fit and sizing. There are no half sizes and there are no other widths, which is gonna be a bummer for a lot of guys out there. Obviously guys with wide feet, uh, but also guys with, you know, half size feet. I actually am a half size foot myself. I have a 11.5. Um, they tell you to size up. If you're between sizes, I got a 12. And these actually fit fine. Like I have no complaints. I actually quite like the fit, which is always a bit stressful uh, when they don't have half sizes. Um, but uh, definitely there are going to be people out there who won't be able to find their perfect fit because they don't have half sizes. That's always a bit of a downside. But you know, it's a pretty new company. They might change that in the future. The pros for the comfort, very good shock absorption. It contours the foot very nicely as well. Uh, and the arch support is actually pretty decent too. The only real downside when it comes to comfort is that the leather it was quite stiff when I first got it. And even now it's not the softest leather in the world. Now, of course, that is because it is largely vegetable tanned leather. And that's just kind of a thing that happens with veg tanned leather. It's got plenty of upsides, downsides. It's not the softest leather in the entire world. Uh, it has softened up a bit as I've worn them in, even during lockdown here in New York. I haven't taken these for very long walks. Uh, I walked from uh, the West Village to Dumbo in these the other day. Um, but the first many times I wore these, uh, it was kind of biting into the uh, top of my ankle here. Like the top of the shaft here, it was a bit stiff and it was really kind of, I got some blisters on the top of my ankle. So that was a bit of a bummer, um, not a huge deal. Again, it has softened up as I've worn them in. And now they're very comfy. And also because there's no Goodyear welt, they're actually surprisingly lightweight for a pair of boots. So that's another upside when it comes to the comfort. So as far as the price goes, at the moment, and this can always change, especially with a company like Oliver Cabell, which is very digital native, they're always like kind of adjusting things based on what people respond to the most and so on. But uh, at the moment, a pair of these is $248. So uh, like I said earlier, they do a breakdown of everything on their website of how much every bit of the leather costs, every bit of the boot that is. So they'll say how much like the leather is and the uh, import duties and the packaging and everything else. And according to them, and like, yeah, I guess I don't have the receipts. Maybe they're lying, I don't know. But according to them, a pair of these boots cost $120. $20.82, which um, I would say to put it out there that you are making, you know, you're, you're charging twice the amount that this boot actually costs you to make. Um, I think it's kind of commendable. They're going ahead and saying that. And that's not a ridiculous markup, to be honest. Like obviously companies like Nike, people that make their shoes in Asia, uh, they have like hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of percent markup on their shoes. These shoes are for boots that are made in Europe and they're resolable. It's a very good price. I mean, basically resolable boots with full grain leather, generally you're looking at 300 bucks. Now it's not a good year welt to be fair, but it is resolable and it's very water resistant. I've been like mashing these through puddles myself all over New York City. So I think the price is fine. I don't think they're worth more than that. If they were 300 bucks, you know, I might take more issue with some of the QC stuff I'm gonna mention in the cons section, um, but $248 for these, yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty good deal. And it's to be expected again, because they have no middlemen and they do all their stuff online. So that's the bonus of these online companies is you get like a lower price than you expect for a shoe like this. All right, so the SV1, is it worth it? Uh, one thing, the pros and cons, you can decide for yourself. The pros, uh, the leather is quite nice. It's mostly vegetable tan leather. It is a little bit chrome tan, but if, you, uh, if you're really into leather, you're gonna be pretty happy with largely vegetable tanned leather for this cost. And the leather's like, it's quite nice, right? At the moment it's in the transition stage between like not being new, but not being nice and worn in. So it doesn't look fantastically amazingly amazing right now. Um, but uh, I am, I'm confident that this leather is going to look um, better as it gets a bit older, especially if you condition them and so on appropriately. Um, I think it'll age, it'll age relatively well. It's also got a steel shank as well. Uh, it's also resolable. All this kind of stuff, the value's pretty good. Pretty transparent too. Uh, I do think they, uh, it, it is commendable when they go into that whole price breakdown for you and everything. I also think it's pretty cool that they bought part of a factory in Spain so they could uh, help to keep costs down, keep a really close eye on all their products and that sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's a nice step, but it's a, it, it is a unique company. I don't know many companies like Oliver Gabel that are really, they are that transparent 
and they spend that much work trying to like get as involved as they can, as opposed to just sort of outsourcing it to various factories, which a lot of companies do in the, even the US. And it's just a nice versatile look, right? Like I like the fact that it's uh, not too dressy, not too informal, as you know, if you've seen my other videos, I'm a pretty big fan of this sort of hybrid look that a lot of boots are going for. So, I mean, I know that's sort of superficial, but we're talking about fashion here after all. It is a functional shoe, but uh, I like the brown leather midsole here, contrasting with the black leather upper. And if you don't like the black leather, again, this is available in like five other leathers, you know, depending on when you see this video, but it's available in a bunch of other leathers if you like the boot except for the leather, right? So you've got a lot of different options for the way you want this boot to look. And it's just a good dependable, um, what's the word? City boot is what people call these sorts of boots, right? So uh, it's not something you're gonna go stomping around around quarries in, but it is nonetheless, uh, it's resolvable, it's water resistant, the leather's gonna age pretty well, and it can take pretty much anything that like a day in New York City is gonna throw at you. Now, there are some downsides with these boots. Uh, I'll start off little. The laces are too long, man. I mean, look at this. Like they dangle down, they don't look cool. They're too long, I don't know. That's just me, that's what I think. Um, besides that, uh, they don't have any half sizes and don't have any other widths as well. I was actually very pleasantly surprised that these fit my foot so well. These do fit my feet very well, but if you're not having half sizes, yeah, you just don't have as wide a variety of foot shapes, you know, uh, able to buy your boots. So um, there's a greater likelihood of you not being able to find a perfect fit for you, uh, as there would be if they had half sizes. And especially if you have wide feet and stuff like that as well. So you'll be bummed out about that as well uh, if you have wide feet. The finishing is also not jaw dropping. This would be like my main complaint, I guess, with these shoes. Like uh, for instance, around here around the heel, right? Normally, uh, if you have like some very nice boots, um, they would have like, this would be like sanded down nice and flat and shiny. With these boots, the leather you can see is sort of like curling up a bit onto the heel, right? Like it hasn't been like sort of a flattened down and smoothed over like you would see on more expensive boots. On a similar note, um, the stitching here on the channel, I think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, yeah, it doesn't perfectly run into the channel. It kind of goes in and out of it. And there's also some loose threads as well, right? There's some loose threads uh, right here, uh, one or two here, down here as well. So um, I guess you'd call these quality control issues. Now, this is always the hardest part of a review, right? Because to be clear, if these boots cost, if they were Vibergs, right, if they were $700 boots, uh, I would be wailing and gnashing my teeth. I can't believe they let this happen. Uh, I'm spending this much on boots, they have to be perfect. But I'm not spending $700 on a pair of boots here. These are under $250. So for under $250, bucks, pretty good. So the fact is, the fact of the matter is, 100% of the people you see in your day-to-day -day life, they're not gonna notice this sort of stuff, right? And you can always just burn off the loose threads. And uh, you know, I doubt that too much functionality is really being affected by the stitching not perfectly following the channel here. I mean, this is probably the, has like the most implications for longevity, maybe. But by and large, like, they're still water resistant, they're still resolvable, the leather still looks nice, and uh, they're perfectly fine boots, right? And given the price, I don't think you can really complain that much about it. But you know, if you're a really, 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 uh, really big boot fan, boot aficionado, you have like really high quality stuff, you only wear $400 jeans and $700 boots, this won't pass muster with you. For the average guy who wants to wear nice boots um, around town, good city boots that people are gonna think look pretty cool and go with a lot of outfits, very acceptable, very acceptable boots. All right, there's my thoughts on the SB1, the service boot from Oliver Cabell. Uh, look, they're pretty good boots, man, for the price, under 250 bucks, resolvable, good leather, shank, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they're good value, you know, if this is what you want. Uh, there's a link to buy them in the description below if you want them. If you don't, that's fine, I won't be mad at you, but I do encourage you to check out the full written review because I got photos there and a bunch of other articles and stuff around my site that you should check out. Um, and make sure you subscribe, too, because I got a whole lot more boot reviews, den reviews, sneaky reviews, Got some bag reviews coming up, that kind of stuff as well, um, coming up. So yeah, subscribe. Have a have a have a good one. <laughs>